So how does Microsoft's uh, master data services solve this problem? Well, if you're looking at a um, yes, uh, system of any size, there's a number of things you, you've got to consider. And um, I've broken this out into a few blocks to try and explain the sort of things master data services does. So firstly, if you've got data of any sort, a database is a pretty good place to store information. Using SQL Server um, means you, you, you're building on top of what's already the, there in terms of a highly scalable um, database platform. Um, and also, you'll need to manage security. Now, the security management within master data services can be very um, granular, so it, it can be tied down so that um, certain users can only see very small sets of information, um, perhaps based on the hierarchy. So you may let um, you know, one office maintain their own staff within a hierarchy, but not be able to see staff, um, their staff details for other people, for example. Um, you can manage transactions, um, it'll note and pick up when certain data items have changed, if that's how you've configured the system, and we'll have a bit of a look at that when we come to the demo. In terms of integration, for master data it's obviously key that integration is a really big part of the system. So you need to be able to receive information from other systems and also um, export that information. Um, so receiving it from line of business systems, perhaps feeding a data warehouse downstream. And it's also essential to be able to talk perhaps in real time. Um, in the next slide we'll talk a bit about architecture, but it, it can be important to talk to a master data system in real time. So you modify your um, CRM system, for example, so that when you make changes to a customer, it interacts with master data services in real time, so that there is always a master central data store. And back to the processes around master data management. Um, to enforce these processes, there's a, um, an interface, a web-based interface um, for stewardship to maintain and manage this data. You can define rules, as MDS calls them, business rules, to ensure that the quality of data is high and that process and workflow um, can feed through on this to make sure that um, the data is well managed and other parts of the process follow through, so that could be validated by, by people, because people will be part of your workflows and processes. Hierarchy management is also a key thing. A lot of the information that, that you look at falls into hierarchies. For example, an organizational structure may have a worldwide sort of country level hierarchy, then a regional level being perhaps England, Wales, Scotland, and then individual offices. That sort of hierarchy naturally can be managed by master data services. So just quickly before we go on to actually having a look at it, this is an example um, architecture for uh, MDS. So what you've got in the center really is the Master Data Management Hub. Around that are the various um, facilities that Master Data Services provides. So you've got a person who can interact directly with Master Data Services through the web interface um, and there's various other um, interfaces, for example, the web interface or a database level interface for talking to other systems such as your e-commerce system, an SAP or AMP system. External product information may be coming in, um, for example. And what we're seeing here is information may be loaded into this hub but also fed back out. Now those feeds could be in a batch process every day or it could be in real time. Or the batch process every 10 or 15 minutes to ensure that all your systems have got the same view of master data. Now master data very often fits into a data warehousing environment because it's um, very important to make sure you've got the same view of your product for the analytical perspective. So your master data services would feed your data warehouse and on top of your data warehouse you may well have analysis services, cubes, feeding through to reporting services report or um, SharePoint dashboards or Excel reporting. Okay, right. Um, okay, enough, enough of the slides. So um, let's, let's go and have a look at it. Bear with me a second and I'll fire up that screen. To lose that. Okay, you should be able to still hear me. Um, right. Now this 
This is um, the master data services, the um, web-based screen here. And what you can see is um, at the top, um, we've got a choice of model and versions. Now, the scenario I'm going to run through, I've tried to keep it relatively simple, but to show quite a lot of things. So I'm not going to attempt to show everything that is in here. I'm going to pick on um, the customer model that I've already created. But you can see I've, I've got some other models in here as well, a product model and account model as well. So I'm going to pick up the customer model and explore is where you would, would view the data. Um, version management, the, the, the idea behind versions is so you can take a snapshot at a point in time of what the, uh, the master data model looks like. I'm going to dive straight into the systems administration screens. And there again you can see the models, but I'm going to choose to manage an entity. Now within a model, you can see that things like customer and product are models. Within the model, you will have these things called entities. And these are more like maybe database tables. Um, we're going to go in there, and you can see my customer model. I've created it, um, but and I've created um, some of these entities. So customers um, exist within countries. They exist within counties as well, because I'm going to create some addresses. Um, don't worry too much about the status and yes, no, um, I, I won't use those in this demonstration. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new entity. And the entity is also, possibly slightly confusingly, called customer. Uh, I've created a model that will manage all things customers, but I'm going to create an entity, which is more like the table customer. I'm just going to ignore the, uh, the hierarchies for the moment. So while I click save, it goes off and creates the um, necessary ta tables in SQL Server. Uh, in order to support this. So that just takes a moment. You can also see here, um, you know, I can jump into, uh, around this, this screen. You can see I'm logged in as administrator. Uh, there, it, there it's saved. So if I manage entities, I can see customers now appeared. And then I want to go in and start changing this customer. And within the... Um, this customer entity, I can create these attributes. Now I'm going to create a bit of an address table. So um, just create the first name. Now I'm just creating these as free form, just taking fairly simple options at the moment. Um, okay, last name. And then um, I just put a couple of address line scene. So you can see it's pretty straightforward to uh, to start, you know, sort of creating an entity within this model that I'm doing. Um, so okay. Now for uh, county, you saw before that I'd already got an entity for, called county. So I can make this a domain-based entity, which means it links to county. So I've got some form of referential integrity really in here, in that um, my counties can only exist if they, in within the customer entity if they already exist elsewhere. So create county, and exactly the same thing will apply to country. Just as long as I pick the right one. Okay, and the last one I will put in is postcode. Um, yeah, and that's going to be free form again, meaning I can type anything in. But this time I'm going to enable train, change tracking. And I mentioned a little earlier that you can control the transactions. Well, enabling change tracking um, means that it will remember what the previous version of any postcode is. And then this is a fairly simplistic example just so I can do it in a half hour demonstration. Okay, so I'll just save that, that customer. Now I've got it there. So I've created um, an, a new entity within my model. And I can see as I click on it, I've got the options there again to, to edit it, um, delete it, etc.